Welcome to Top Gear's Speed Week 2018. And once again, we've completely surpassed ourselves by getting the best, the fastest, the most varied group of cars we've ever had. But then again, I would say that, wouldn't I? So don't take my word for it. We've got them all lined up on the grid here at the Circuit de Charade, so we can go and take a look at the runners and riders, see why they're here, talk about how they earned their place at TG's coveted Speed Week. First up, the Bugatti Chiron. Not sure I really need to introduce this car, do I? But I will. It has 1,500 horsepower. It has 261 mile an hour top speed. Limited. We still don't know how fast this thing can actually go. It costs 2.5 million pounds. Enough said. And over here, well, it completes an all French front row. Fittingly, it is the Alpine A110, something altogether different. Um, weighing in uh, about a tonne, give or take a sandwich. It is a lightweight, it's such a sweet handling car. I drove this thing on the road, never on track. So my worry is it might be a bit swamped on the big stage, only around 250 horsepower, but cannot wait to see what this thing can do. Moving on, the Lamborghini Urus. Ooh, controversial, yes. Get over it, Lamborghini has made an SUV. They made one in the past, of course, the LM002, so not that much of a surprise but it is a 600 horsepower, four litre twin turbo V8 SUV that can do physics defying things on track. That's why it's here for how it drives. It is a superb piece of engineering, love it or hate it. Over here, the BMW M2 competition. Already one of our favorite M cars, the M2, but they've just refined the formula. Under here, they've put a detuned version of the M3 and the M4's twin turbo straight six now with just over 400 horsepower, not loads of power, but then it didn't need it. This is about simple, back to basics, thrills, rear wheel drive, small package, small wheelbase. You can have a manual gearbox, although this one has a DCT. Right, getting quite serious now. The 911 GT2 RS, these things don't come around that often, so it was only right that we celebrated it. The maddest, the most ferocious, the scariest, the bitiest 911 that you can get. Very, very rear wheel drive, very, very turbocharged, very much over 700 horsepower, this thing. If it does start to rain, and it doesn't look like it at the moment, you'll see me taking a pretty wide berth on this one. Over here, the Hyundai i30N. What is a Hyundai doing at Top Gear Speed Week? I hear you cry. Well, what Hyundai have done is produced a performance car, their first performance car, and smashed it straight out of the block. It is focused, it's a serious driver's car, but it's also great fun. It doesn't take itself too seriously. It makes silly noises from the back end. Basically, they stole a guy from BMW M called Albert Beerman, who developed this car, and you can tell it's quite a serious driver's car, although you wouldn't expect it from looking at it. Moving on. What is this mystery package behind me? It's something called the Dallara Stradale. Now, you've probably never heard of it, but Dallara is a company that makes race car chassis for pretty much any formula, any racing car formula you care to name anywhere around the world. This car is their first go at producing a road car. And unsurprisingly, it's pretty track focused. Um, so track focused, in fact, that you don't have a roof, you don't have doors. You have a carbon chassis, you have carbon bodywork, and um, not a lot else, really. It's a tuned version of the Focus RS's 2.3 litre EcoBoost engine, just under 400 horsepower, but Here's the thing, it weighs 855 kilograms, basically half the weight of an RS3, but the same amount of power. I'm gonna to need to bring my A game for this one. Over here, oh, the lovely, the pretty Aston Martin Vantage, even in battleship gray with blacked out wheels. Have to say I'm a fan of this spec, not everyone else is. Big story here is this is a hugely important car for Aston Martin, they've borrowed, pinched, been given the four litre twin turbo V8 from AMG and slotted it under there. Over 500 horsepower, a serious, serious car, this thing. But then it does cost serious money. It starts at 120 grand, which starts to erode some of the Vantage's appeal. But let's not worry about money here. We're here to drive, we're here to have fun. And uh, well, that's gonna be top of my list to have a go in. Or maybe this is, actually, on second thoughts. Yes, the Ferrari. 488 Pista, and excuse me if I just have a little moment, because for me, mid-engine supercars, Ferraris just have something special above all the others. And this, of course, being the 488 Pista, is the special version of, for me, 
the most special supercar. So you'll forgive me if I get a bit gushy. Um, what do we have? Well, we have the same twin turbo V8 engine, over 700 horsepower, 710 brake horsepower here, and more electronics than Tottenham Court Road. Uh, there's some trick error as well, look, the S-duct in the front, a big hole in the bonnet basically that uses the whole front of the car as a wing to jam it into the tarmac. It's so clever this thing, but does it have the emotion? Does it have the sound, the noise, the fury of the 458 Speciale? We'll find out. Also from Italy, another super SUV. They're everywhere these days, aren't they? But this one is quite special. It's the Stelvio Quadra... Quadra... It's the Stelvio QV, all right? That's what we're gonna call it. It's essentially the same car as a Giulia QV, just jacked up a bit. And I'm not just making that up. Alpha said when they were developing the Stelvio, the whole point of this car was to make it drive as much like the Giulia as possible. Obviously, we love the Giulia QV, a former Top Gear car of the year, no less. So we're expecting big things from this, despite it being an SUV. Yeah, hard to miss this one, isn't it? Now, technically, it's a performance car. Anything with 577 horsepower V8 is technically a performance car, but I know what you're thinking. It looks like a block of flats because it pretty much is. It's the new G-Wagon, the new G63 AMG. What I love about this is Mercedes haven't tried to reinvent an icon. They've just made it look as much like the old one as possible and just changed all the bits that matter. So new interior, new chassis, new suspension. It drives a million times better than the old car, but probably won't be setting any lap records today. Over here, the Fiesta ST. Of course, a dyed in the wool Top Gear hero, this car. Now it has 197 brake horsepower, not masses, but it's how that power is produced from a teeny weeny 1.5 litre, three cylinder turbocharged engine under there. I love the fact that this car brings such small cubic capacity, but it's all about fun, this thing. It's about lightweight, it's about handling, it's about lift off, oversteer, it's about having a laugh. Again, will it feel overwhelmed on a big track like this, all the undulations? I don't think it will, to be honest. It's such a laugh, that thing. And we arrive at the back row, an all British back row, but don't read too much into that. We're gonna start over here, in fact, with this, the Lotus. Who knows what's going on with Lotus, the company? All we know is they're still producing world-class cars, proper, proper driver's cars. And this thing, well, it's the Exige 430 Cup, the fastest road car that Lotus has ever produced. You can see it's doled up in this red and gold livery. This is because it's a special edition, the Type 49 designed to celebrate the 50th anniversary of Graham Hill's F1 World Championship. I happen to quite like it, but then my taste is quite questionable. Um, an awesome thing around track. Some of the other guys had to drive it across Europe to bring it here. Not so awesome on the motorway, apparently. But again, we're not gonna worry about this. Also, this could well be the best sounding car here. Just wait until you hear this V6 above 4,000 RPM. Absolutely tremendous. And finally, we come to the McLaren 600 LT. I don't think I'm wrong in saying we are the first journalist in the world to get our hands on this car. You would have heard of the LT badge. It stands for long tail. It graced the 675 LT, an absolutely unbelievably phenomenal car. So it's got a lot to live up to. Um, what is it? It's lighter, it's got a bit more power, it's got more downforce, it's a bit stiffer than the 570S. In many ways, a baby version of the Senna hypercar, and probably for mere mortals like you or I, more fun around a tight, twisty circuit like this. So there we have it. Those are the contenders for Top Gear's Speed Week. If you're anything like me, you've probably chosen your favorites already, but we're gonna have to put that bias to one side for a minute and go ahead and pick a winner by driving the tires off these cars. All in the name of research, of course.